Welcome everyone, this is Everyone Loves Pirates, and this is going to be a video series, a tutorial series actually, for space engineers, and it's going to be how to survive in the red crashed ship, or the crashed red ship scenario. So in this scenario, basically, let's say you've been piloting this red ship across the galaxy, and you smash into an asteroid, there's no one around in any direction, and you need to find a way to survive, and basically uh, either make this asteroid or these, this asteroid system your home, or build some better ship, maybe a little fighter that can survive going throughout the galaxy, uh, or at least in the direction home, to get home. So to start this, we are going to use survival mode, obviously. We are going to bump up all of these just for video making purposes. You'll be able to do all of this under realistic as well. Uh, it's just going to make things take a lot longer. And in order for these videos to not take forever to watch, uh, for you guys, we're just, I'm just going to bump this up. So stuff like inventory size, without that, I'd be constantly having to drop things off and keep track of where things are and uh, all that kind of stuff. Same thing with uh, similar efficiency and refinery speed. It'd be just a lot of time waiting for them to do their stuff. Now, on online mode, we're going to keep it offline instead of private because I have no intention of ever turning this into a online uh, multiplayer deal. And this should, I believe, pause the game while we're in menus. So that way, uh, another way, it just makes it easier for me to film uh, so I can get some pauses in it and uh, do cuts. Uh, max objects, we might as well just take this uh, nice and low because um, we don't really need to worry about having a lot of objects around. Uh, we'll keep it safe so we're not worrying about anything else. Four asteroids is fine. Um, all this is good. I'm going to turn off autosave so we don't get those save lag spikes that will interrupt the video. Um, I'm not going to use cargo ships, but that's another way. Maybe we'll do a scenario like that where instead of mining, we do more of a little pirate thing. So uh, you're only, or at least the reason, the, what, the way we choose to get home instead of uh, subsisting on our own is maybe going on this shipping lane and trying to take over some ships. So uh, let's get started with this. And if you don't know what this game is, or you'd like to know kind of a little more that you can do without watching a lot of uh, building in survival mode, uh, go ahead and check out uh, the video I have, the first look at creative. It's a little longer than probably needed to be. Uh, you can jump around in the video, but uh, it'll show some of the stuff you can build. I do build a, a mining ship, I believe, and kind of show some of the conveyor belts and stuff so you can automate uh, some of your stuff. So this is us. Um, we are flying around and I can't hit any of the buttons I want to. So here's us in third person mode. This is our ship. I'm going to head to the control room first and foremost. Hello control room. Okay. I remember my controls. Hit T to jump in there. Hit K to get into our control panel. So right now, actually I'm going to jump back out. You'll see our engines are off. Everything's off. Uh, so let's turn it on. Because one of the things I like personally is to build under gravity. Don't don't ask me why I just do. I've been I've been on Earth too long. So as we turn this on, we'll see with all the systems operating in their current state, we have two hours of fuel time. Why is this important? Well, fuel is the most important aspect of this game when you're trying to survive because it's the only thing you need to survive at this point. Your suit uses energy, and as your suit, I'll show you in the uh, sorry in the bottom left you'll see our suit and my health at 100% but that bottom number second to the bottom the energy is at 100% and that will go down as long as I'm not in this cockpit see it immediately starts going down so without energy if you get down to zero energy basically your suit fails and you start taking damage and you die and the only way to fill that up is to get into the, the seat that we're in in the cockpit and the only way for the cockpit to have power and to refuel our suit is for the ship to have power and if we leave it on like this we won't have power in two hours so let's go into the control panel as I was trying to do before and see kind of what's using up most of our uh, energy so if we look right now our power usage is at really only 0.2 percent of our reactors it's not telling us exactly how much power that is um, but we don't really need to know we go into the here, and we can just tell by what else is on. We got lights that are on. Well, they're not really using anything. In fact, they may not use anything at all right now. And our thrusters, um, I know from experience, don't use anything. And actually, I can show you that right now. So let's go to our thrusters. This is interesting. You would think, okay, they're on. I see blue stuff coming out of them. They're using power. But let's just group all of these together as engines. Grouping is amazing. I love this update. 
and turn off the engines. Okay. Well, you'll see that our power usage, our fuel time, is still two hours. Even though our engines are off and everything else is on, it's still going to take two hours. I must have grabbed one of the reactors in there. The reactor went down as well. Um, so let's go back to that. Um, let's look at this group. Yeah, I accidentally grabbed the reactor. So if we go into engines and there we go. Save. Turn that reactor back on just for that sake. So there we go. Same power usage, same fuel time. Oops. So it doesn't matter if our engines are on or not. The reason why we might want them on, since they don't use any power, is that way if we run into our ship or something, our inertia, our momentum will get pushed onto the ship and have the ship start moving out. The ship will stay in place as long as the inertia dampeners are on and the gyroscopes are on, and we don't have to worry about it floating away because the engines are off. So that's a good reason to keep the engines on. Uh, lights, you know, out of habit, because I also think lights should use energy. Uh, let's group all our lights together. So let's turn off the interior lights and we'll see that it really made no difference at all. So I always turn them off, but you know what? Let's um, let's leave them on. We'll have some interior lights in our ship for a change. You don't really need them. The big thing is the gravity generator. So I know from experience that basically, you know, we can take it down to nothing and it's going to use basically almost no power. If we take it to a fifth of normal gravity, it will basically use a fifth of its normal output. So we're already saving 80% of our energy. Uh, we can also take the depth, we can basically take the size of the field down, and that will also use less energy. So let's put that at maybe like 75, 76. Um, these can be a little bit less. I remember where they are correctly. And in that way, now we're using only 50 kilowatt hours. We're using basically, you know, less than a tenth of the energy we're using before. Now you see we have a uh, fuel time of a day, which is a whole lot better. We're using 0.02%. And we could get that down a little lower, but it's not going to be a huge deal right now. So let's jump out of here. We have gravity now. So the nice thing is we don't have to use our jet pack, so we should be using less fuel because we can just run around everywhere. And I find it faster because we don't have to orient ourselves to get through doorways and stuff, but we can run everywhere we need to in the ship, and it's just faster. Another thing I'm going to do just while I'm here, I'm going to move all the uranium see we slowly float down because it's not a whole lot of gravity. I'm going to move the uranium to one reactor. And there's a couple reasons for this. One, I just kind of like having everything in one place. And two, I'm going to be at least taking one of these reactors and dismantling it. So we'd have to move the uranium in place. So let's just put it all in this central reactor. And we don't need to worry about it again. Um, crap. I did it the wrong way, didn't I? Or what I did is I missed that. Yeah. There we go. So we lost power because I put it all in my inventory instead of that reactor. So what do we need to do to make sure we can live? Like we said, we need power. That's the only thing we need to live. The way to get power is by mining uranium ore. There's uranium in here somewhere, at least one of these asteroids that's around us. That in the background is just... Uh, just a image. But there are multiple asteroids around us. Now once we get the uranium out of there, it'll be uranium ore. We need to refine it. So we need to build a refinery. And those are the components we need to build a refinery. And luckily we can get all those components by cannibalizing our ship. So we need to build a refinery to make uranium ore into uranium that we can put in the reactor that will power the ship, which will recharge our suit when we sit in the cockpit. Which is great. That's all we really need. But really to build anything else that we need. We can cannibalize a lot of this ship, but there's just some things this ship doesn't have. and We're going to need an assembler to build those things. <clears throat> and one of the things that we need for the assembler is displays. And the only place we have displays on this ship is in our cockpit, the screen for our cockpit. Now the nice thing is we have cockpit number two here. So we can dismantle cockpit number two, get ten displays, use four of them to build the assemblers, and then use another four to build the smaller screen cockpit. 
and it'll still be just as useful, but we won't have to worry about basically building an assembler, mining silicon R, uh, and other things we need to make displays, and then assembling a display in time for the energy of our suit not to run out, because remember, we won't have a cockpit because we dismantled it, and we need to sit in a cockpit. But luckily, this one is the exact same thing, just with less displays. And kind of one of the interesting things is we can just do that now if we want to. And before, I did not. I did it the hard way. I dismantled that. I built the assembler. I made more displays so I could build the exact same thing in the exact same place. But let's gra grab our grinder. I'm going to show you just what I think is a better way of doing it. I haven't done this yet, but let's just get this now. So you'll see our energy is going down. It'll go down very fast as we use the grinder too. So you want to make sure you're 100% energy because we need to build this cockpit really quick. And it's functional until it gets below that red line there. So if we wanted to, we could, we could uh, we still jump in here, put our energy up to 100%, and then grind this down. Luckily, we have a big enough inventory to hold all these components. And luckily, it won't take too long to, to tear this down and rebuild it. And we can just build the other one now, but you know what? Let's bring it over here so we don't have to run into that room every time to to get um, to get charged up. So let's build cockpit number three instead. Save a little time so we can use those things. And let's just throw it uh, in the corner here. Uh, let's turn it around. No, it won't let me have it face that wall. There we go. That's probably the easiest way to see the screen, I think. So let's do that. And then we need our welder. And luckily, once again, we have everything we need. So you'll see we built this with one interior plate. That's kind of the base thing you need to build it. And it'll build the frame with just whatever that bottom item is. It needs one of those to build the frame so you can kind of plan things out. Now, whatever components we have that it needs in our inventory, here's our inventory, it will store in this block so that you don't need to keep them in your inventory. It'll store everything here like a workshop and door fortress. Um, so even if you don't have everything, you can store it here and then build it. But since we have everything, since we took it from the other cockpit, which had the exact same components, uh, except for more displays, it automatically threw it all in here. If we check our inventory, we don't have anything except for those extra displays in our inventory. And we will slowly weld this. Once again, this will be nice because we won't have to run around as much to jump in our cockpit because we're going to build everything else out in this area. And we already have those displays ready, and we can build an assembler anytime we want to. Though we're going to want to do the refinery uh, first, obviously, so that we can make sure we have enough energy to live. And really, that's all there is to survival, is making sure you have that energy and that you use your components in a smart enough way that you can make more components. So once you get the refinery and the assembler set up, you're basically home free. You can do whatever you want. That's kind of what, But that's the thing you need to do for every single start, at least on this scenario. So we are going to use our, uh, well, I guess we might as well just jump in here and uh, there we go. Our energy goes back up. And as you're grinding, it takes a lot of energy. Welding does as well. So you'll be doing that a lot. But that's nice. So we do need to build the refinery first. No reason to even go looking for uranium ore until we have it anyways, if you ask me. And I know that it's awfully tall, but we're going to put it in this area kind of near all this other stuff. Um, but I'm going to need to grind away all, a lot of that stuff. And we're going to need plates anyways. But let's look at the other stuff we need to build the refinery. Well, we need 20 computers, 12 motors, 20 large steel tubes, 40 construction components, and 1,200 steel plates. So we could go around and grind all this out that we need to grind out anyways. But it's going to take about 10 seconds per light armor block, and we're only going to get 25 steel plates. It's not very efficient. Luckily, as I found out from my first survival turn, we have these reactors that we don't need anyways. And if we look here, they have a total of a thousand steel plates in them. So between this and making room for the refinery, that should be all the steel plates we need. It also has all the other components, those computers, motors, large steel tubes, and construction components that we need. 
So there's no reason not to just start taking down one of these large reactors. And it's actually a lot quicker, too. I mean, it still takes a while, but to get this many steel plates just from light armor blocks would take, I don't know, like 200 times as long. Because that's what I did the first time, and it took forever. Now, the interesting thing is, you can see that even though we're breaking down more stuff, it's not being put in our inventory. And that's because those reactor components there uh, are very, very heavy. Or they're very large. That's the issue. It's, it's, it's the volume, not the mass, that limits what we can carry. Because really, there may not be any gravity, so it's volume. So what we need to do is come here and drop off, basically, every time we do a percentage point, it's going to reload... It's going to take stuff out of here and put it in our inventory. So, just kind of drop off the reactor components as we get them. Because we have no use for those anytime soon at all. Basically only when we start building reactors for ships and stuff. Which is quite a ways off. And there we go. Now anything else that we do here is going to put the rest of the stuff in our inventory. And as you'll see, eventually we'll run out of room for these steel plates as well, right there. Um, so, that's not too bad. If we wanted to, we could get rid of... Um, actually, since we have all the reactor components out here, what we could do is just store stuff in here now. So, you see, we already kind of took it out, but we, since we have to build up those steel plates before we can move on to building construction components and such, we can just use our welder to store all that stuff in there. Now it's not in our inventory anymore. It only took one second. Nice little trick I found out. And then we can grab it all back in one second by grinding it again. So let's just store that stuff there because we're going to take some time to grind out where we're going to put our reactor. But basically we have all the components we need now. Which is pretty cool, if you ask me. So I know it needs we need to get rid of at least that floor because the the um, what's it called the refinery. I think I said reactor a couple times. The refinery is is taller than this area here, but this is a good place for it. We'll put the assembler right next to it. Uh, you can put the refinery on top of the assembler and be able to feed stuff manual between them without any tubes or anything. I actually like having more of an automatic setup. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to move stuff in between. It actually takes almost no time at all. Maybe it's a waste. But I like automation. I like kind of efficiency. So if we had the refinery basically with a collector attached to it that's dropping automatically dropping off anything that's refined into the assembler. So anytime we come by the assembler, it already has all the ore, the, uh, not all ore, but the ingots in there that was made from the ore. Then we don't ever have to move stuff across manually. It's a, it's a thought. That means we basically never have to touch that again. We do a little feeding tube somewhere for the refinery, and we never access the refinery manually again, which is kind of the stuff that I like. And that's how I play um, when I play. In Minecraft, I did a lot of redstone stuff because it was fun. So I'm just going to come up here and just kind of pick anywhere. It's always easier to mine down, if you ask me, instead of up. We don't have a lot of gravity, so I might, you know, get moving in a in a direction where I have to use my jetpack eventually, but luckily I'm not using my jetpack very much at all, so we have a little bit of gravity. I don't have to worry about falling because the gravity is so low I can't even hurt myself if I fall from a great distance. So this is what I find as efficient. Now doing all these steel plates really is going to be really boring for you guys to watch. So I'm going to end this video here, uh, it's 20 minutes anyways, and come back for the next video where we will, I'll, I'll mine this all off off screen, mine it, or mine it, grind it out off screen, and then I'll come back and we will build the refinery and we will start looking for some uranium ore so that we are significantly self-sufficient. We don't have to worry about energy. So thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next video.